Thank you. Uh, right. Uh, actually, I've got an announcement to make, everybody. I'm leaving TechCrunch. I'm going to do the Mike Butcher coin. Um, and you'll be able to invest in an ICO shortly. It's a joke. Joke. I'm joking. Right, Tom. Um, thank you very much. Tom Hume, everyone from Google Ventures. Tom, you've, you've actually gone, had a bit of a glittering career, haven't you? You're a young global leader for the World Economic Forum. Um, how did you get to be so talented? I, I'm not talented. I've been in the right place at the right time. <laughs> that uh, does, does rather help, doesn't it? Now, um, so there's often a little bit of confusion, actually, about Google Ventures because, um, you know, people think, well, you're know, like another VC, you know, but obviously a very influential one. But um, is, do you find it a bit difficult to some, sometimes that uh, people can perceive you um, in, because with the word Google in it? You know. Yeah, I think, I think sometimes people make the mistake and think we're strategic for Google. Yeah. But actually, the founders of Google made a decision early to separate strategic investing and financial investing. So strategic investing happens through Google Corp Dev, and the financial investing happens through us, GV, or Google Ventures, and Google Capital, which is later stage private equity style investing. So I think the market is slowly sort of understanding that. And most importantly, I think our portfolio companies kind of see the value of the link to Google. We often mm. make introductions to Google, uh, and that really adds value, I think. Yeah, you're in the family, so you, you, can, you can call up uh, some of the people inside you know, the big machine, as it were. Um, so what's been, has there been a general sort of investment theme that's been coming up over the last couple of years at GV? Um, what sort of themes have you started to kind of hone in on? Yeah, we, I guess, you know, our job is to deliver financial return. And we ask ourselves two big questions, really. The first is, what investments can we make that will make the world a better place and give us that financial return? And then we ask ourselves, what investments can we add value to? And I think we add value in two ways. The first is we have a wonderful operations team, about 60 people that support the portfolio. So we have designers, machine learning experts, hiring experts, comms and PR experts that support the portfolio. And then we also add value by making introductions to alphabet companies. And so when you remember those things, it kind of will give you a good idea of the type of stuff we invest in. Mm. So we're interested in investing in developer tools, uh, I invested in Currency Cloud earlier this year, which is a wonderful developer tool. We're interested in genomics and life sciences, yeah. uh, because they definitely make the world a better place, and we can help with our data perspective as well. So it will naturally lead you to understanding where we're investing. The, um, the health tech aspect thing has started to come through quite a lot in the last couple of years, hasn't it? Um, what's, um what sort, of, uh, what sort of some of the uh, ones that you've gone? You've gone into spy biotech, Oxford Sciences Innovation, genomics medicine uh, in Ireland. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you, I mean, you're not, I presume you're not really a healthcare specialist. How do you do due diligence on those big investments? No, it's a great, it's a great question. About a third of my deals have been in genomics. So, look, my background's physics. By the so, way, what is genomics for so everyone out there? Genomics is broadly the study of your genome, which is your instruction manual. So every one of us in this room has a genome, about three billion pairs of letters, GCAT, and they define us. And the extraordinary thing is every one of us is 99.9% .9 similar. So you often hear these stories about diversity. Like, we're unbelievably similar no matter how diverse we appear. It's a really important thing to remember. Ah. Scarily, we're kind of 95% similar to the earthworm as well, but that's oh, a really? different story. That would explain a lot. That's something to worry about. Anyway, yeah. um, but, you know, genome have become accessible for the first time in human history. We can read that instruction manual. Uh, so what's, what's an example of the kind of technology you might invest in? in that space? So a technology, I invested in a business called Cambridge Epigenetics, and it uses similar tools that read the genome, but they also read your epigenome. So that's the markers that control if your genes are expressed or repressed or switched off. And we, uh, we have a hypothesis that we'll learn about our bodies. It's amazing. Like, all of us go to the dentist, 
and it's preventative. We'll go to the dentist and they say, Mike, you need to have a filling because this is going to be painful in six months. You don't have a relationship like that with your doctor. You only go when something's happened. If you understand your genome, it opens up the potential of preventative medicine, oh, really? personalized medicine. So you could, it's like an early warning system. It can be, absolutely, yeah. because it'll, set, it'll define your precondition to certain diseases, some of them unbelievably rare. Fascinating. What, um, so the other thing that you've been doing is a lot of fintech and cryptocurrency uh, stuff. What are, what sort of, give us some examples. You've got invested in blockchain, yeah, company absolutely. blockchain. Um, they are they're, uh, more like a sort of a wallet, aren't they? Yeah, they're yeah. a non-custodial wallet. So, yeah. so the three fintech deals we've done in Europe in the last uh, nine months, or actually a year, one is Lemonade, so it's home and renter's insurance. First market is in the US, but it's a Tel Aviv team. Shai, the co-founder, very, is here um, this week. It's a really, really easy app, isn't it's it? It's unbelievably yeah. low friction. Yeah. They're very transparent. It's a phenomenal product, I think, wearing my design hat. I love that business. Yeah, it's good. Um, So that's Lemonade. We also invested in Currency Cloud. So Currency Cloud's an API that enables developers to process cross-border payments. Uh, So, you know, some of their well-known customers are all of the emerging digital banks that we've read about the funding rounds recently. And then, as Mike says, the most recent fintech investment in Europe was blockchain. And blockchain's a non-custodial wallet. So they're a cryptocurrency wallet Bitcoin and Ethereum now, that basically enables you to set up as your own bank. So um, what's uh, some of your views about the cryptocurrency world? Because it's kind of, it's going like wildfire, all this, these ICOs and, uh, you know, obviously the price of Bitcoin going up and Ether. Um, what's your general view? Do you think that this is, this is here, all this stuff is here to stay? I do, I do. I, look, there's a lot of noise out there. Um, But Bitcoin, if we start with Bitcoin, I believe Bitcoin's here to stay. Uh, I think if you just think of Bitcoin as a store of value, it's hugely valuable. The market cap of Bitcoin today is about $120 billion. I often think it's kind of the greatest startup of the last 30 years Got a bit of Bitcoin yourself? I have, I have. I'm really bullish about it. Mm. Um, And there's all sorts of reasons. You know, there's some uncertainty around the fork coming up next week, etc. But, you know, credible exchanges will enable you to invest in futures in Bitcoin very soon in the US later this year. So Bitcoin as a store of value, I'm sold. Then the question becomes, can Bitcoin become a medium of exchange? So, you know, for that to work, there's development required because a Bitcoin transaction right now takes the kind of processing power that you could heat your home with in a week. I mean, it's that much. So there's questions about how it could be made more scalable. Yeah. Then there's Ethereum. I'm really excited about Ethereum because it's more um, flexible, but its flexibility also creates more attack surfaces. Mm. So I think there's more questions to answer with Ethereum, but the flexibility is unbelievably exciting. Yeah. And then now, you know, blockchain is being applied to everything. And if I'm honest, I think many of the blockchain examples we're hearing about or applications don't really make sense. A traditional database would make sense. One of my colleagues last week put it up, put it really nicely and he, you know, we talk about blockchain often and he makes the point, for the people that understand blockchain, it's like having a hammer. And if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. But sometimes we've got to say, actually, blockchains are not the most appropriate tool. Yeah. There is a lot of that about that everybody is applying, trying to apply the blockchain to everything. And yeah. you kind of think, mm, maybe, maybe you don't need right. to do that. Exactly. Um, apart from the fact that blockchain developers are really expensive now, I think, Billy. Um, you, you, we just had a panel on the European tech scene and um, its sort of, its relationship with the Valley. I know you, you do a lot of stuff in Israel as well, don't you? Um, you know, what, what, are the, what are the differences you're seeing at the moment between, say, Israeli tech startups seeing Europe, the US? Yeah, I, so I actually think the market is less easy to differentiate by continent and easier to differentiate by sector. Yeah. And there's certain sectors where I think they're very equivalent. Like, in truth, I think fintech in London, gaming in Stockholm is as good as any hub in the US. Yeah. And so when thinking about this, I'm less interested in how do we make the next Silicon Valley in Europe. If we try and do that, we'll fail. Yeah. Instead, we say, actually, what are our unfair advantages and what can we really succeed at? And those are two specific examples. Right. So for me, if I look at it by sector, there's a lot of reasons to be really bullish about Europe. 
Uh, you guys um, do, um, obviously Google's a big company and applying a lot of AI to what it's doing. Do you think that um, AI is going to be, um, uh, you know, it's going to be possible to do a startup in AI? Because I know that a lot of the talent has been sucked into, say, DeepMind, which is open, owned by Google now. Um, do you think um, artificial intelligence is a, uh, a startup game or are the, only the real big players will win? So I, I think about uh, artificial intelligence as kind of broadly in two buckets. The first is general and the second is applied. Mm. So DeepMind specialize in reinforcement learning and do an incredible job of general AI. Like I have nothing but admiration for Demis and the team he's built there. That is an unbelievably difficult problem to solve. It requires incredible hundreds of PhDs in that case. Mm. And the computation costs are huge. So that's probably not a great place for a startup to start. That being said, I struggle to think of great disruptive startups at the moment that shouldn't have some aspect, some flavor of AI inside them. Mm. And a way I sometimes think about it is, just ask yourself what tasks are repetitive in your business and they probably will lend themselves well to AI. Anything that you find you're doing frequently probably will move over to the machine. Right, and so um, what do, what's the next couple of years look like for GV? Um, you've, you're doing a lot in the crypto, fintech, healthcare, uh, developer tools. Um, what's, a, what's the general strategy for the next couple of years or so next year? It, it's sort of unsatisfactory at, at factory answer, but I think more of the same. We are really happy with returns. We're happy with the opportunities. We don't believe that we're short on opportunities. So we continue to focus across Europe, Israel, and North America and do more of the same. I think there's other areas that we'll start to be proactive in, but that's often down to us as investors. Like I'm fascinated in computer vision at the moment right. and are looking at a series of businesses um, that might enable you to map the world in interesting ways or interpret uh, new information from images. But that's more an interest where I do believe it can make the world better and we can add value. So there'll be more of that proactive stuff as well. Making the world a better place. Isn't that from Silicon Valley, the, the, the TV yes. show? Yeah, I, uh, probably. I, it was too painful to watch after the first couple of episodes, <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. It was pretty, it's pretty painful, but it's great satire. Yeah, it Fantastic is. Fantastic satire. Well, we're out of time. I hope that was uh, uh, informative. Thank you very much, Tom Hume from uh, GV. Thank you. Thanks so Thanks. much, Mike.